time for entertainment with Miss G. Hello, Miss G. Hello, Idro. How are you doing? I'm well. How about you? Very well, thank you. So, we woke up to news that churches are set to pay royalties. Looks like the Ghana Music Rights Owners Association, GAMRU, wouldn't have musicians or go perform in churches without receiving royalties from churches. They won't have us also sing in church without paying for the songs that we sing. This so is controversial. Very controversial. In fact, the gospel musicians are not amused about it. They haven't been informed as to what's going to happen, how that is going to work. They don't believe in the system. Some of them have started complaining. The pastors also are not interested Obviously. in this one. And so we don't know what's going to happen. But Gamro says that they will have a meeting on Sunday in Kumasi with some stakeholders and brief them on what uh, avenues they will take in recouping or receiving these monies from the churches. A lot of pastors, including Kum Chacha, is not happy about this one at all. I know that some gospel musicians, including Jack Alulume, have said that this is not going to work. Earlier today on radio, I heard Celestin Donko's manager, who uh, happens to be her husband, also complaining about it. She says, he says, this is not the way to go. We are still working on fighting piracy. We are not done with that. The church is a well-structured institution. Yes, they might pay royalties, but how sure are we that these proceeds will come to us? Yeah. What measures are being put in place so that we can be sure that whatever you receive from them would go into our pocket. So that's been the confusion between Gamro and gospel musicians. So we'll see how that pans out. But I'm saying to them that we might we need to be careful because churches are now saying we won't sing any local tunes anymore. <laughs> After all, international musicians have not come to tell us that they want to take royalties from us. But anyway, I mean, there, there are songs that they can sing that nobody can claim um, copyright to. Are you sure? Yeah. So if, the if hymns, singing, yeah, yeah if they're singing, singing hymns, yeah. Dana say, Dana Oh, there's somebody say. who's done a version of Dana say. Yeah, somebody would have done a version Are of Are you that sure song, you're not singing that person's version? No, I'm just singing the But Dana was put together by someone. Yeah, but the person is not going to come to want to claim Gamma royalties. Gamma will come to claim royalties for, on the behalf of the anyway, person. Anyway, I, I, I'm waiting to see how they're going to fight this thing. <laughs> exactly what everybody's the, the waiting. The are not going to take this thing. Well, like let's see how that goes. And then let's talk about um, the Baden style everyone is talking about. Have you heard Adina's Too Late? It's too late, it's too late. Na, 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 na. You hear it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I you think, heard yeah, that yeah, one? Yeah, okay, so there's a young man who wrote that song. He's called Kim Promise. Now, he happened to get Sarkodie, paved the way for him. He said, he tells an amazing story of how he met Sarkodie, how Sarkodie held his hand, took him to kill bits, how that generated in his collaboration with Fuse ODJ, who I don't think I've ever had done a collaboration with an up and coming star. So he tells the story. I was in the studio with my friend called Kuvi. He produced Double Trouble mm. with Vision and Sakade. The Kuvi made the beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was in the studio with him and we saw Sakade park across the street. I told Kuvi, let's go down, talk to this man and you know, tell him about the studio and he should come here what we do. Kuvi was like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. So we just went down, crossed the street, told him. He said, okay, cool, you come check it out. An hour later, we see him coming up the stairs and coming to the studio and that's just how it happened um he could we played some beats and then i ended up doing a freestyle and he loved it right there and then then you know we've, be, we've become family ever since so through him i met a lot of people and um kill beats happened to be one mm. yeah. so you say the circle gave you the first opportunity yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think, yeah. you know it's too late it talks about a bitter relationship you know whose idea was it uh, i got to the studio kill beats already like put down the melody on the beat but it wasn't like worse thing so um, I was like, oh, this is really nice. It's like, yeah, we should work on something. And um, I spoke to Adina for a bit, I tried to get into her head. And usually when people write songs about like heartache or, you know, all of that, it's usually like a sad part, like mm -hmm. someone, but like I said, I like to be different. So I tried to like put a twist to it. So did you think that this was going to be a very big song? Um, yeah, I actually did. <laughs> yeah. You knew? Yeah, because I really, when I heard it the first time, when I heard the beat and the melody, it's like, hey, kill beat, and you made me. It's like, I thought the song, she killed it. So, mm. yeah, I just, I knew the girls were going to love it, but it really, really did well. Maybe more than my expectation, but I expected it to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, you know, she putting it out there gave people more insight to who this young man can promise. Oh, yeah, whoever. Began to 
up in the eyes. Who is he? Yeah, like whoever, myself, you know. Whoever heard that, were like, oh, you actually wrote that song. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I really love that song. I'm like, oh, yeah, thanks. I'm like, that's basically well, I, I think it's done well for my brand mm. as a songwriter. Yeah. People say that he writes good songs, but how come what are his hit songs? You know, we've had Kim Promise. Kim I, Promise. I, I never really had songs out there. Mm. I'm now putting songs out. So the first, like, I have Tango with Fuse with I give thanks to oh, bye bye. Mm. You know, be me where I do not. Then we came with Double Trouble this year. I did, I did, I, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, be right, but we do, I'm girl. This thing that did really well. And now, that's oh yeah, on oh, him my brahmin chain. Yeah, so it's like, it's just climbing, and I'm just thankful. It Let me just understand how you got fused ODG, like because okay. till true. So, okay, so start for the opens. Done, he hasn't done anything like when he did it for me. He hadn't done anything with any like, like any like upcoming whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Kill Beats played my song. They were on tour outside, and he heard it. He was like, Ah, probably no no. It's like, oh, that's my boy I'm working with. Like, oh, I like it. And the rest is history. He just really liked the song. He jumped on it. He's, he's, he's lucky. Very lucky yeah. indeed. Okay, so today marks the third year since Castro disappeared. We haven't found Castro, you know, for three years now on the 6th of July. Uh, in fact, it started from the 5th of July when they traveled to Adar to have fun. He didn't return on the set. By then, we couldn't find Castro. The team came back without Castro. Now, it's Thursday, so it's a good time to throw back to an interview that confirms people's fears. This is Asamwajan who says, I was there so I could tell the story better. Let's hear him on Castro's disappearance. In what job to Musa Castro? For me, I was there. When Kofu Aminion Wall was there, for what the, the person said, no, mm -hmm. and for what I've observed, no, mm -hmm. I can strongly say, say, Anda is no more because I was there. Okay. I was there. I saw. Sana mihuno. No. Sana mihuno. But this year, no, the body has not been found. Okay. Into into being confirmed. Do you think the body will ever be found? That That's is that is that is the, that is my my problem right now. That is the discussion right now. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So, um, but let go at some point. At some point, but the police say you cannot still. It's seven years. So I don't. I tried reaching Castro's dad today. For some reason, his number has been switched off. I hope that you know I get through to him, and then we are able to hear what the family has decided. You know, after this interview, especially yeah. whether they've also you know decided to let go. Then. Oh, yeah.